Hi there, my name is Kim. Welcome to my craft space. Today I'm going to show you how to make these charming little fabric pumpkins. You can make one or a whole patch of them. Better yet, there is a link to a free downloadable pattern in the description box below. So let's get started with supplies. First off, you'll need some woven fabric like quilters cotton. I found this solid print at Walmart, it was under $3 for a yard. You'll need some just regular crafters felt. I like this stuff I got at Hobby Lobby because I could get a nice thick sheet of brown for the stem and then some thinner fabric for the facial details where I wanted them to stack up, but I didn't want them to get too thick. You'll need some embroidery floss by colors that match your uh, felt unless you want to have some contrast. Also by matching thread for your pumpkin fabric. If you use a contrasting color, it'll show up once the pumpkin stuff like it did in this little guy. Lastly, grab a whole bunch of polyester fiber fill. Start your project by cutting the pumpkin fabric. It takes four pieces for each pumpkin. I either trace around the shape with a pin and then cut it out with scissors, or if I have a rotary cutter and a mat that can turn easily, I'll use that. Just place something heavy on top of your um, pattern piece. You'll also want to mark the dots both on the top and the bottom of the wrong side of each of your four pattern pieces. This is going to tell you where to start and stop your stitching. After you get all your pieces marked, it's time to get out your sewing machine. Set your machine up to stitch a straight stitch. I use a slightly smaller stitch than I would for quilting because I'm going to put some strain on the pumpkin seams by stuffing them so very tightly. So grab your pumpkin pieces and you're going to start by placing two of the pieces right sides together. You're going to stitch from the top dot to the bottom dot using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you lock in your stitching by back stitching at the top and the bottom of your seam. Then do the same for the other two pumpkin pieces. You now have two sides to the pumpkins. Open them up and place them right sides together, matching tops and bottoms. And like before, you'll sew from the top dot down to the bottom dot. We've made it to the last seam. For this one, you want to make sure that you start sewing from the bottom of your pumpkin to the top. Orient your pumpkin the right way. Start from one dot and finish to about an inch and a half below the other dots. That's going to give you an opening to turn your pumpkin right side out. So let's get it turned right now. Take your time doing this. Make sure your seams are okay. Once that's all done, I like to finger press my pumpkin. This is pretty easy to do. Just put your finger inside the pumpkin, use your finger and your thumb to pretty forcefully press the seam allowance to one side. That will make your pumpkin look nicer once it's stuffed. Let's get that polyfill now. One thing I do is I shred my polyfill before I even start stuffing my project. I do this because I think it helps me not get as many clumps in my project. And I like to stuff tightly. Here I am finishing my first bowl of polyfill. Before I finish, I'm making sure that I've got all those curves of the pumpkin really filled out tightly. I think that looks pretty good. So now we're ready to move on to the stem. Cut about an inch by inch piece of felt and then you're going to want to roll it up as tightly as you can just from one end to the other. Once you've got your stem like you like it, grab a piece of matching thread and you're going to whip stitch that flap down. Start at one end of the seam, work your way all the way to the other end of the seam, and then put the needle back through the stem to where you began so that your thread is coming out just on one side of the stem. So you can clip your threads and then place that stem where you'd like it in the center of the pumpkin with that thread side down. With the stem in place, we're going to whip stitch the pumpkin closed using some orange thread. This is kind of a tricky bit just because 
there is so much pressure with the stuffing. Here I am being like I still need a little more stuffing right at the top so you can just poke that in where you need to. When you get to the stem, you'll just include that stem in the stitch. I go around one side of the stem then the other. Before I tie off my thread, I do go back and make sure that I don't have any gaps that I need to stitch up and fix. Looks pretty good. The stem is nice and secure, and now we're ready to move on to the face. Making the face is my favorite part of this project. I tend to just play around and freehand cut my shapes, but you can also use a pattern. Just take the paper piece and trace around it onto your felt with, you know, like here I'm using a Sharpie marker, but you could also use any sort of fabric marker that will make a mark on felt. After you trace around it, just cut it out with some scissors. Make sure you cut inside the marker lines. If you didn't quite get off all the marker lines, you can always turn your piece over too so that the good side faces out. The black felt is going to be a lot more challenging to mark. I'm using a white chalk pencil here. It's not fabulous, but it'll do. For some shapes, it's easier to use one of the nesting pieces as a guide to cut your new piece rather than using the pattern like I'm doing here with these lips. So I'm just going to continue to cut out all of my face shapes and preview them on my pumpkin as I go. I'm thinking I like the way everything looks here, so now it's time to get out my embroidery floss and sew the facial details onto my pumpkin. I'm going to start with any embroidery that needs to be done. In this case, I'm going to be doing some teeth. If I wanted to mark my pattern, I would just mark it using a basting stitch with a single color of contrasting thread. Here though, I'm just going to eyeball it. And again, I'm going to use uh, two strands of embroidery floss, and I'd either back stitch this or use a pretty even running stitch. For time's sake, I'm just going to do a running stitch on this set of teeth. Okay, just finishing up this line of stitching. I'm going to make sure that the teeth lay nice and flat before I knot it off, and then see how it fits over the lips. Looks good. So now I'm going to stitch the teeth to the lips using some white floss. And it's again, it's just going to be a whip stitch. I'll start at the back so that the knot won't show and then go all the way around the shape. I'm aiming for a stitch length of about an eighth of an inch, but if my stitches aren't perfect, I'm not concerned. A little irregularity just adds to the charm of this project. So now that I've got the mouth done, I'm changing my thread color to red, and I'm going to whip stitch the lips onto the pumpkin. This is a little awkward just because you've got to get used to holding the pumpkin shape still and getting your needle where you want it to go. But just take your time and it's really not that bad. You're only wanting to pick up a little bit of that woven pumpkin fabric and then a little bit of the felt. Again, don't be too worried if your stitches aren't completely uniform. If the color of your thread matches the color of your felt, your stitches are going to be hidden anyway. When you get to the end of your shape, just make a real tiny knot next to the border of the shape and then hide the tail in the pumpkin. Just be careful not to cut the pumpkin when you cut your thread. Just putting the finishing touches on this guy. This is the last piece to go on. One thing I love is that I've made a bunch of these little pumpkins and no two ever look alike. Isn't he cute? And here's my finished pumpkin. I think he looks really cute with all of his brothers and sisters. I sure had fun putting this video together for you. If you have any questions, please drop me a comment in the comment section below. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye-bye.